Okay, we're going to do the deep basics of the Ten Commandments. This is five through seven. Six, seven. Yeah, five through seven. All right, so let's open up here with uh, Luke 10, 25. Luke 10 and 25. We're going over the deep basics of the Ten Commandments. Luke chapter 10 and verse 1. No, 25. Luke chapter 10 and verse 25. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? That's all the question that we had before when we was in religion. We all had that question, what should we do? We came up with our own understanding, our own way to serve God. But we had a lawyer that asked Christ, what should he do? Because he cared about what happened to him when he passed. Read on. He said unto him, what is written in the law? Mm -hmm. How readest thou? So the, the, the way he answered, what, what have you been reading in the law? I like to pull this scripture a lot of times because, you know, Christianity, especially religion, is trying to, they try to disconnect Christ from the commandments when he's actually one and the same. He said, I am, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. So all of those commandments that we read about in what we know as the old covenant, they pertain to Christ in some way, shape or form. And we'll get to that later on down the line when we go to it. And we'll show you how he is the word made flesh. It's just a living embodiment of everything you read. So it says, what is written in the law? How readest thou? Read on. And he answering said, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. Uh -huh. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, this do, this do, and thou shalt live. So he's telling me, if you want something better, and we think about that all the time, man. Just think if we go through this life struggling, being oppressed, slavery in a land that ain't ours, and then we get to the end and we get even more eternal damnation. That's a, uh, damn. Let's think about that. Being in this, in something worse than this forever. So if you want something better than this, he's, he's, he asked him, he said, what'd you read in the law? This do and live. Give me Matthew 22. Because this is just one, you know, the gospels, you know, they are, uh, the disciples, from their perspective, writing down what happened when they was with uh, Christ. Right. So they, they basically say the same thing. Some, some there's a precept here that fills in with Matthew, though, and it's a precept in Luke that will, uh, that's precepted in John, tied together in that way. Right. Uh, Matthew 22, let's start at verse 35, the same account. Matthew chapter 22 and verse 35. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him. So we, had said, our, we had our own lawyers. Read on. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Mm -hmm. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. So we went over that in detail uh, a few weeks ago, from commandments one through four. This is the first and the greatest commandment. You can't love the Lord thy God without following those first four of the Ten Commandments. And if you didn't get a chance to, or you don't remember it, go back and watch the class. So you can put that stuff into your spirit. This is the first and the greatest commandment. Read on. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Mm -hmm. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So Christ is telling you every single thing you read in the Bible, in the laws, is summed up into just these. You can break it down. If the thought of, oh, it's 600-something commandments, man, that's a lot for you to fathom, just break it down into two then. Love God, love your neighbor. Okay, that's two commandments. I can do that. Well, now let me learn how to apply those two commandments instead of overwhelming yourself and thinking, Oh, it's 600-something commandments I got to learn. That's what religion do. That's, that is what, like we watched before, Creflo Dollar and all them other pastors, that's how they um, de deter, deter, 
deter. That's the word. That's how they deter you from keeping the law. They make it seem impossible to do. It's over 600 something laws and you automatically in your mind think, dang, I ain't got time to learn that. <laughs> I just ain't even going to do it. Well, Christ simplified it and said it's just two. Love God, love your neighbor. Now you just got to find out how to love God, love neighbor. Easy does it. That's how simple it is to keep the law. So let's deal with uh, today we're going to deal with uh, what I want to deal with. Your mother and father. So let's go to Exodus 20 and 12. The fifth one, right? Let's go to Exodus 20 and 12. So let's deal with how to love your neighbor. Because the first four of the commandments teach you how to love the most high. And then the last six tell you how to deal with your neighbor. So let's read that in Exodus 20 and 12. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 12. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be pro that thy days may be long upon the land mm -hmm. which the Lord thy God giveth thee. All right, so it says, Honor thy father and thy mother. A lot of us know this. Hey, even your wicked parents pull this on you. They know this. You're supposed to honor your mother and father. They ain't teach you that. But it's deeper than that. Go to uh, Ephesians 6 and 1. So now we're going we're just going to get the the surface level of it. What does honor thy father and thy mother mean? And I want all you um, middle schoolers, you high schoolers, to listen well. If you can understand, you can flip through the Bible. You know where the books of the Bible is. Open your ears up. This is for you. Also, it's going to be for you parents. But I want you teenagers definitely to listen to this commandment. Even if you ain't a teenager. You're middle school, elementary, if you got some comprehension... Pay attention. Uh, read me that, Ephesians 6 and 1. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 1. Uh huh. Children, obey your parents. Obey your parents. That's what we just read in Exodus 20. Read on. In the Lord. In the what? In the Lord. What does that mean? Does any brother by a show of hands know what it means to obey your parents? Because we just read it in Exodus 20. But Paul expounded on it and said, in the Lord. Let's see. Uh, Mordecai, what do you got? Basically, do everything they say as long as it follows with the commandments of the Lord. As so, long as it follows in the commandments of the Lord. That's what he's telling you to obey them with. Because, uh, what is that? I ain't got this down. Sirach 5, I believe. 15. It's 15, right? 15, last verse. Sirach 15. There we go. Sirach chapter 15 and verse 20. He have commanded no man to do wickedly. Neither have he given any man a license to sin. So the Most High has given none of us a license, free will to go and sin. No, not at all. Not to do wickedly either. That's why back in Ephesians 6 and 1. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. In the Lord, because you're going to have to answer to the Most High for what you've done on this earth. And we'll get some scriptures later on. About that, how God don't care how old you are. We read in um, the, the little young kids was uh, teasing Alicia about him being forehead bald. God killed him on the spot. Bunch of them. 42, I think it was. He don't care how old you are. It says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, according to the commandments, right? Now, what if... Let me think, what if you you in your, your mother's house, you know, you found your way here, but you, you know, you still at home and they don't believe. Hey, that's, that sounds that sounds hard, right? Uh, where is it in Luke? Right. Let's go to the book of Luke. Let's show you how to deal with that. Luke and let's read chapter two. And. Uh, Let's read verse uh, 43. We're going to jump around. Luke chapter 2 and verse 43. This is Christ. He's at the Passover. Go ahead. And when they had fulfilled the days, as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother knew not uh, of it. Read 42. Luke chapter 2 and verse 42. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. Read on. And when they had fulfilled the days, as they returned, 
the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother knew not of it. Uh huh. But they supposed him to have been in the company, went a day's journey. And they sought him among their kinfolks and acquaintance. Jump down to verse 48. So he stayed back in Jerusalem. And his parents went on and did, going back home. He's doing his own thing right now. <laughs> Go ahead. Luke chapter 2 and verse 48. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou, why hast thou thus dealt with us? So because they came back looking for him. He's like, why are you doing this to us? You know we was worried about you. You ain't supposed to be doing this stuff. Why are you dealing with us like this? Read on. Behold, thy father and I, behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrow. Read on. And he said unto them, how is it that ye sought me? Wist ye not? That I must be about my father's business. Don't you know I'm, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do in the Lord? I'm doing my thing. Why are you searching for me? What's the problem here? He's 12 years old, a little slick at the mouth. <laughs> He's doing the Lord's work, though. I'm in the Lord. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. I'm sitting here asking the Lord his questions. We're going back and forth. They're astonished at my understanding. They didn't know I knew the Bible like this. I'm dropping knowledge on them. What's wrong? Verse 50. And they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. He was too deep for his parents. <laughs> Read on. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. So although he was doing the Lord's business, he was doing what he was supposed to do, he was still living under the roof of his parents. They didn't quite understand what was going on. And many of us, many of y'all fall into that situation, unbelieving parents. But if you in their house, you subject to them. You subject to what they want you to do. Go back to Ephesians chapter 6. So, you know, you got a, uh, a parent that don't believe, use wisdom. Use wisdom while you're under that household. You might be able to win them over by them seeing you change. But you still got to be subject to them. Go ahead, read that, Ephesians 6 and 1. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 1. Children, obey your parents and the Lord. For this is right. For what? For this is right. God said this is right. Go to Sirach 7. Sirach 7, 27. Let's see why obeying your parents in the Lord, he said this is right. Sirach. Feel free to chime in on this one, you uh, officers that got kids. You in the spirit. You're in the spirit. <laughs> no, I'm going to that. <laughs> Sirach 7, 27. Why is it right to obey your parents when it comes to co the commandments? Because... We ain't uh, oblivious to what's going on in the world now. We got kids that have grown up. They've been teenagers. They done went off and done their own thing. They done went and stayed with grandparents. They couldn't wait to get out your house. And you doing the best you could. If they stuck around, they would have heard the deep basics of the Ten Commandments. But maybe you can share this with them, and it can prick their soul, and they return back as the prodigal child. Read that in Sirach 7.27. Sirach chapter 7 and verse 27. Honor thy father with thy whole heart uh -huh. and forget not the sorrows of thy mother. What a, can somebody expound? Because we know this is the Ecclesiasticus. This is the, one of the wisdom books. Honor thy father with thy whole heart and forget not the sorrows of thy mother. How, how does a man or daughter honor thy father with thy whole heart. Now, you know what the heart, according to the Bible, is already. So how do you honor them with your whole heart? Does a brother know? Can somebody give me an example? If you got kids, you should be raising your hand, at least fathom them son. Okay. All right. Y'all just sit there and listen. I give you some examples. Um, your, your son, your daughter might be on the cusp of they going to a regular school out here with the wicked. And they know that they ain't supposed to be cutting school and ending up in some boy's house on the couch when the parents ain't there at work. At that instance, that son or daughter should say, I can't do this. Out of respect of my father who brought me into this world and is teaching me the commandments of how to be a princess of God, a prophet of God, I'm not going to do this. That's how they would honor you when you're not there with their whole mind. When it comes to the, the choice of sin or righteousness, 
Okay, maybe they don't believe in the Bible. They don't understand it like you do because you look older than them a little bit more life experience. But one thing they can do is honor you with a whole heart according to the little bit that they know. They know you're a righteous man. They know you're trying to do you're a godly man. They might not know what godly men are supposed to do, but they see the actions of their father. I'm going to honor him with my whole heart. I'm not going to do that. The next part of that says what? That's just an example. What's the next part? Forget not the what? Forget not the sorrows of thy mother. Okay, so let's see. Maybe maybe you, uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know if it's any uh, mama's boys in here. Right. You ain't got to admit to it. <laughs> you ain't got to admit to it. But does a, can a brother give me an example of how he would not forget those sorrows of his mother? What is the sorrows that a mother go through when it comes to children? Right. Hosea. Let's see. If you got parents, a lot of stuff should be ringing through your mind right now. Being give young, me an example. Being young and out and about and worrying them at, while they're at home late. Okay, that's the sorrows of a mother. Okay, all right. Uh, Cliff, what you got? I like that shirt. Um, when she gave birth to you. Okay, that's the sorrow of a mother because that was some that was pain, right? Some of them pop them out a little easier than others, but we understand general. Yes, sure. Um, some of you older men, y'all got mothers, right? What does she do to take care of you to get you to the point that you are now? Right. So start thinking. I'm coming to you. Go ahead. Having to spend large amounts of money on you. Hmm. Spend large amounts of money on you. Okay, Tabor. What's the? Why does God tell you not to forget the sorrows of your mother? The troubles of teaching. The the years she happened to spend in, in you teaching you. Uh, not to do this, not to go on straight. Okay, all right. Naraya, let's, can, can somebody make it personal? Right. Give me some personal stuff. Like, when you're out late and she's wondering where you are. Somebody just said that. Oh, how I many, went to the bathroom. I didn't know. brothers was raised in like a single mother household? But they, nobody we, got no examples, though. You gotta have some examples. Uh, your ride, did you have your hand up? Give it to your right there. Um, so basically, any type of sickness that, that becomes you, she's the one Who's who always the, takes care of you. There you go. Your mother's right there right. wiping your runny nose when you laid out in the bed. Even to the next step. Because a lot of us, you know, it, it baffles me how kids, especially in this truth, can turn their back on their parents and go with somebody that didn't change your little stank pampers. They didn't breastfeed you, they didn't prepare your bottle. They didn't work uh, overtime <laughs> for six, seven, eight weeks. Right. This is when you was in. But yes. For years, they didn't take that low-paying job to pay the bills to keep the roof. They didn't. Right. They didn't have to deal with that white man that didn't. They know didn't like them, but they had a smile on their face to keep a job because they know at home somebody gonna be hungry when I get there. Right. God says, "Don't forget the sorrows of your mother." That stayed up all night with you when you were sick, woke up at three, four o'clock in the morning when you were right. that was hard it got up. Daddy did do it most of the time. <laughs> Daddy do it sometimes. Hey, I'm a, hey, I got you know I gotta say something about that. Go ahead. Daddy ain't doing it. <laughs> Daddy ain't doing it, man. I tell you, the most I gave sisters a spirit that far beyond right? he didn't give us that. Right. And they could wake up the next day and go straight to work. Man. Man. I I just getting off of work at 8 o'clock and having to, you know, get the kids prepared for bed, it takes out of me. Like, I have to go to sleep, like, right after. Mm -hmm. I, can't, I, don't, I can't stay up, watch a favorite show or anything like that. I go straight to sleep. And, and the thing about that, sor uh, the sorrows of thy mother. When I was younger and um, my, my older brother told my mother what I was doing, I was hitting licks. And she cried. She says, the things that I do, having to work is not enough for you that you have to go steal from other people. That broke my heart. Mm. I was done. After that, I ain't hit no more licks. After seeing that alone, I was like, all right, I, I, can't, I can't do it no more. Just her telling me that, all those hours, all the times I have to work, that you have to go steal from somebody else, she felt like it wasn't enough. Kill me. I was like, right, I'm, I'm done. Read that thing again. Because we own the commandment of honor thy father and thy mother in the Lord. Especially you kids in here now. 
Read it again, 727. Sirach, chapter 7, verse 27. Honor thy father with thy whole heart, and forget not the sorrows of thy mother. Remember that thou hast that thou was begotten of them. They brought you into this world. Read on. And how canest thou reco recompense them? Look what look what God says. <laughs> that's that, that's so heavy. God saying, how can it's nothing that you can do. It ain't it's no amount of money that you can give your parents to repay them for the things they've done to get you to the point where you are in life. Just taking care of you every day of your life, making sure you was fed. is no way that you can repay them. The only way that you can do it is what? What do we read in Ephesians 6 and 1, brothers? In the what? Keeping the commandments. Because a, a, a lot of kids grow up, start smelling themselves. That's what they say. <laughs> you know, whoopings don't hurt no more. I'm grown now. I'm off at college. And you get besides yourself thinking that, you know, I did this for you. I do this for you. I did that. And all she got to do is pull this one scripture on you and shut everything down. It ain't no amount of money that you can give me to repay me back for what I did to you. The only thing you can do is keep the commandments. Read it again. Verse 28. Remember that thou was begotten of them. And how? Canest thou recompense them the things that they have done for thee? God said it ain't a matter of money that you can give your parents for what they done done for you in your lifetime. And the greatest thing that they could have done for you is to repent and come in here and give you a chance at eternal life. But you turn your back and you go back into the world. I, I, I'm bringing this out. You honor your mother and your father. There's no way you can repay them but to stay in this truth. That's the only way you can repay them. And guess what? If you find yourself and you say, I don't give a damn what they done for me, or what done for you, you best believe it was a judgment in the law for rebellious kids. They said, drag them out to the elders of the city. God ain't playing about that thing. Because we are the children of the Most High God, and he knows exactly what a parent goes through to bring their kids from an infant into manhood. He done went through it longer than any of us. Dealing with the nation of Israel, when we came out in Egypt, we was babes. We was infants. We didn't really know what we was doing. But we kept stumbling along the way. He kept giving us mercy, put, give us a spanking captivity take us out of it just like you do your parents and he's been patient with us the whole time and the only way he wants us to repay is repay him back is by doing what brothers keep the commandments it's the same thing uh go to proverbs 6 and 20 because we still on the part for where it said for this is right proverbs 6 and 20 speed up here proverbs 6 and 20 Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 20. My son, keep thy father's commandment and forsake not the law of thy mother. Uh huh. Bind them continually upon thine heart and tie them about thy neck. What does that mean? That means always have the word in your mind. Let that always be with you. Because the commandment of that your father should have been giving you and the law your mother should have been giving you is what comes out of this Bible. God said, don't forsake that thing. Have it always with you because it's going to do what? Verse 22. When thou goest, it shall lead thee. When you go, wherever you go, what your parents done taught you is going to lead you. Basically how you was raised. You're going to know what to do. You're going to know how to speak to people. You're going to know how to have manners with uh, elderly people. Read on. When thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. What does it mean? When, it, when you sleep, it shall keep. When you sleep, are you, um, are you on guard when you sleep, brothers? You defenseless, basically, right? God saying the commandments, when you sleep and you at, at rest, those is what's going to protect you at night. That's why it says in Sirach 33 and 1, no evil shall happen unto him that feareth the Lord. Fight for God's laws, he shall fight for you. He'll protect you. That's why I said, when you sleep, it shall keep thee. Read on. And when thou awakest, it shall talk with thee. How does the commandments of God, how does it talk to you? 
Can a brother give me an example of how the commandments of God that your, your parents will have given you talk to you? Brother Lyle, how do they talk with thee? Like I use me for example, when I wake up, I just a whole bunch of scriptures just plow through my head. Exactly like, like right. Ringing in my head. Exactly right. They talk with you. I got to do this. I got to do that. I can't do this. I got to do that. Right. And Talks like, with you. Go ahead. Right. Like when um, Elijah wakes up, he has a daily routine. Mm. Before anything, before brushing his teeth, before taking a shower, he reads the Lord's Prayer. That's oh. the first thing he does every time he wakes up in the morning. All praises. Read that again. Verse 22. Uh, Sirach, I mean, Proverbs chapter 6, verse 22. When thou goest, it shall lead thee. When thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. And when thou awakest, it shall talk with thee. Jump over to Proverbs 7 and 1. Proverbs chapter 7 and verse 1. What is those, what is that commandment that your father has given you? Read on. My son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. Mm -hmm. Keep my commandments and live. And my law as the apple of thine eye. That's why it is right in the Lord. Because these commandments your parents teach you is going to help you to live a prosperous Israelite life. A lot of these kids that you see out there on the news getting gunned down, the ones that got the daggone blonde hair, purple hair, green eyes, blue hair, pierces in their eyebrows, pierces in their cheeks, tattoos on their face. They suffer from parents that didn't teach them the laws of God. Thus, they stuck in the never-ending cycle of Esau's system and can't get out, can't get up. But if you obey the commandments of your fathers, you're going to end up living. Go to Psalm 78 now. Psalm 78. Because these kids ain't going to learn it on their own. Yeah, they got enough with homework. Just trying to pass Esau's school system. Psalm 78. So, so how do they get to the point of obeying you in the Lord? How do they get to that point? Psalm 78. Psalms chapter 78. Verse, verse 1. Verse 1. Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings mm -hmm. of old, mm -hmm. which we have heard and known. And our fathers have told us. Our what? Our fathers have told us. So it's your, it's your job, fathers. Teach your kids the commandments. Teach them the laws. That's why I'm going over the deep basics now. So hopefully you can take what you're learning and you can give it to your kids. And as they grow in understanding, you teach them the surface level. Okay, they get a little older. He's 10, he's 12, he's 15. Okay, let me take it to the next level of what this truly means now. And by the time that he gets of age where he goes off on his own, he's going to be wiser than any kid out there. He's going to be able to think things through. He ain't going to react just off of impulse. Because through his mind, what's going to be talking with him, brothers? The laws. But you have to tell it unto them. Tell it to your daughters. So they don't go out and get a knucklehead Negro and be a baby mama. Or be in an abusive relationship. What's that movie I was watching? Yeah, it's a, it's a um, series on... Um, Netflix called uh, Greenleaf. I think Oprah produced it. She's exposing all. She, I don't know if she thinks she's doing something good, but she's basically exposing what they be doing in Christianity. How they all jacked up. They do whatever they want to and use the Bible as a front. You know, commit adultery, killing people, stealing money. <laughs> I'm telling you, the uh, 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 sodomites through the church. They got all kind of stuff in that thing, man. But it's one, one of them, one uh, scene I seen, it was, um, it was a young girl. She's about 16, 17 years old. She gets a boyfriend at 16, having sex with him. And on the low, he's slapping her up. And she comes, and in her mind, she internalizes this. This is how he loves me. Oh, so now I'm something to deal with. No, 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 no. I bail on Floodgate to come tap dance with you. And I'm the one that has to be dealt with. What about her, Z? Huh? You smashing her or me? Please, come on. Please. Get off of me. I'm with you. I'm with you. Sit. I don't. Oh. Sit. Ow. Baby. See, see, no, see, no, baby, no. baby, baby, don't baby, touch baby, me. baby. Don't. Why me? Why would you do that to me, I say? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hey, I didn't mean to, okay? 
It's just, it's just when you judge me like that, I just feel like I'm gonna lose you or something. Okay. I don't wanna lose you, Sora. Do the best thing. Just have a happy new year. Really? Yes. Even more than music. I promise you, I will never do this again. Okay? I just fall out. And I get crazy. And I can't control myself because. Because I love you. On the low, he's slapping her up, and she comes, and in her mind, she internalizes this. This is how he loves me. Because this one thing ain't been applied. Verse 3. Which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. Ain't no laws going on in that house. Ain't no laws going on in that house where she would understand, I ain't even supposed to have a boyfriend at all. I'm only supposed to have a husband when I become of age. Read verse 4. We will, not hide, we will not hide them from their children, shewing to the generations to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works that he have done. So you parents, you got to sit down and make the Bible real. You got to read the history of David. You got to read the history of Samson. You got to read the, the uh, wisdom of Solomon and show him the flip side of where when he went off and what happened to him. You got to show him the good and the bad. A lot of times we try to hide, shelter your kids. You're doing them a disservice. You shelter them. You don't shelter them. It's the real world they're going to have to deal with. What happens is you shelter them, they get out there in the real world, and somebody call them a n You know what I'm talking about. Call them messed up, they come back shocked, they cry, and they can't believe that Esau don't love them. It's because you've been sheltering them. Tell them who the devil is. Show them the picture of him. Show them all that he done to us. Now, use wisdom when you go to school, son. Don't call them devils in their face. <laughs> Don't call them devils in their face, daughter. Wait till you get out of the class, and then you let loose on them. They ain't going to know who you're talking about. <laughs> you say all the damn devils you, as soon as you get out of their class. All right? <laughs> Read verse 4 again. Psalms chapter 78 and verse 4. We would not hide them from their children, shewing to the generation to come, the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works that he have done. Mm -hmm. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. They should do what? Make them known to their children. Can a brother give me a precept? When should we make the commandments known to our children? Somebody give me the, um, the camp suitcases and give me the Josephus book. It's the big blue one. When should we make the commandments known to our sons and daughters? Should we wait until they get, when they're about to leave the house and go into middle school, high school, college? Lyle, when should we make known the laws and commandments of the Lord to our kids? Uh, Deuteronomy uh, 6 and 7. Let's go to it. You cooking. It said we sh they should make them known to their children. When? Deuteronomy chapter 6. Let's read verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 1. Now these are the commandments, the statutes and the judgments, which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, that ye might do them in the land whether ye go to possess it. Jump down to verse 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 7. Six. 6. And these words which I commanded thee this day shall be in thine heart. In your mind. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. And thou shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house. And when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. You're supposed to be talking about these commandments at all times. And, and I know some of y'all be like, dang, I, my conversation, I don't know. You know, it's a little kid. I can't talk to him about the commandments all the time. What you do is you, you, uh, you slide in these commandments based on the situations that's going on out there in the world. Right. Okay, we riding down, we ride past the basketball court. And we see them out there playing basketball. Oh, dang, he crossed him over. Yeah, but you know them's Greek fashion, son. Right. <laughs> you know uh, another one. Um, my son was watching that new troll movie. And um, the girl says her birthday. I said, we could keep birthdays. No. That's it. Right there. The it. That's how you talk is with them all the time. When they lie down. Before they go to sleep, 
they should be talking about them commandments. When they wake up, they should be talking about them commandments. When you're going about your daily business, you should be talking about them commandments. Should that, to your kids, should she have on those pants right there? What's the commandment on that? This is how you, you get these things to stick. The same way that your uh, parents got Christmas to stick in your head. Right. And, and you, you, you know, we coming out of slavery and everything. Um, you'll, see, you'll see that, like, if it's Esau, the one that created bedtime stories. No, the scripture just told you. Mm -hmm. Even when they lying down. Right. Read them a bedtime story out of the Bible. Yep. There's plenty of stories to pick from. Yep. So even when they're lying down, read a short story. Noah's Ark. You can read, some, you can read anything. Remember, everything in, this, in the scriptures is given for us for correction. That's right. So give it to your children. That's right. Go back to Psalm 78 now and read uh, verse 5 again. Songs chapter 78 and verse 5. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, mm -hmm. which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. Make them known to their children. Now read that in the, the book of Josephus it's called the page and the book and all of that to show you when these commandments should be made known to your children. Uh, this read is that. the book of Josephus, page 806. It also commands us to bring those children up in learning and to exercise them in the laws and make them acquainted with the acts of their predecessors in order to their imitation of them. Their imitation of them. You know, all of us, we, were, we was always told, be like Mike. That's why most of us was out there on the court trying to hit a fadeaway jumper. Our daggone daddy was 5'11". <laughs> But we was trying to work on a fadeaway, thinking we're going to be 6'5 one day. And we stopped at 5'10. We ain't even as tall as our daddy. I'm shorter than my daddy. I'm out there playing basketball because I, in my mind, I'm going to be like Mike. I'm going to be like Barry Sanders on the football. Those are the people I was imitating because I was pushed into sports. But us as Israelites, we're supposed to be going over the, the what does that say again? About our forefathers? Uh. Make them acquainted with the acts of their predecessors. The acts of our predecessors are in this Bible, and they're supposed to do what? In order to their imitation of them. This is the spirit you're supposed to push on your kids. Act like the righteous David. Don't commit what he did, but you be merciful like him. You still be a warrior for God. You be knowledgeable in the scripts like Paul. You be strong like Samson for your people. You go out and, and preach to your people like Jeremiah. You travel like the disciples did. So they can start to imitate that, and that gives them direction in life. It says without a, a vision, the what? The people perish. We'll never get out of this rat race if we just worried about ourselves. And, you know, you got to choose your, how you going to live on your own, son. Uh -huh. No, you give them direction. Go ahead. It's more, it's more, it's more. Go ahead. And that they may be nourished up in the laws from their infancy. From when? Infancy. <laughs> hey, you know, um, I've seen videos where little bitty uh, yeah. one-year-old babies know how to read. <laughs> Baby that can read, they be flipping through the cards, saying it. Uh. R. Rock. Was two, two. Light. light made made good job. Her. Her. Yeah, and do math, so ain't no excuse. It's said from their infancy, right? Soon they pop out. Is it more than that? And good. might neither transgress them. Nor yet have any pretense for the ignorance of them. No, ex no excuses. They ain't got no excuses. So you don't taught them all that they supposed to talk. So even if they do decide to turn out wicked, it's gonna eat them up in their conscience that they out there committing sin. Cause you don't, you don't plug these laws into their mind from the day that they was born. You got something, officer? Okay. 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 All right. Go back to um, Psalm seventy-eight. And read verse 6 now. Songs chapter 78 and verse 6. That the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born 
who should arise and declare them to their children. You see the cycle? <laughs> The ones that ain't even born yet should be planning on as soon as he get out. We're going to start him off in the commandments right here. I already know because Israelites, Esau did the research for me, and we already know that Israelite babies, when they pop out within six to nine hours, they already trying to support their own head. They start walking before Edomite babies too. We are, we, we better than them from top to bottom. We genetically better than them, spiritually better than them. So I ain't going to have no excuses for my son or my daughter. I'm going to start putting this stuff in their face from infancy. You'd be amazed. I'd be telling the uh, officer Gad all the time, like, damn, Kadar is smart, dude. I said, like, I know he can't, he can't form his lips to, to talk like I talk right now, but he understands everything that I'm talking about. I don't talk to him like no little baby. He been here before already anyway, so he ain't got no excuses with me. <laughs> I'm going to talk to him like a grown man. We got to get out of that mindset of Google Gaga, do do what that day, baby. Don't be we doing that with your kids. We don't call no, we don't point the brothers out for doing that, but that's Israelite babies. Be doing that. Don't Google do that Gaga. to them kids. You do them a disservice. Google Gaga, do do that, man. Doing it, oh, man. <laughs> Remember, the spirit's <laughs> eternal. The spirit is eternal. That spirit in there, it understands what you're talking about. It just can't, the flesh can't formulate to, to get out the correct thing. But in that mind right there that it got, it's saying those words. And that's from infancy. And also, when you look into the statistics and things, if your kid's having trouble reading, best thing you can do for them is sit them down and read the Bible. It's some, something that they got, uh, Kids Corner, I, I was telling the Kids Corner, um, it's a uh, st statistic that Esau's done. If you can't read something about like the third grade, it's the third grade, they automatically got a foul on your kid and they say he's more likely to go to prison. They, when, they, when the teacher gets the little report on all the kids in her class, behavioral attitudes, okay, he can't really read. Mm, all right. So they tend to treat them different. Thus, they on their way to pipeline to prison. Uh, Amaziah. Shalom, leadership. Shalom. Um, there's also children out there like six years old speaking ten different languages, so there is no excuse. It's no excuses. We, we've only tapped into the, the, the very little bit of the, the power of the mind. We've only tapped into a little bit of it. Now, I know for us that are a little bit older, it's harder for us to learn languages, and it's hard to teach an old dog new tricks is what they say. But you got a sponge right next to you. If you got kids that can soak up everything, don't limit them because you limit it. Let them go. Teach them the Bible how it's supposed to be taught. Give them the understanding. And as they grow up, they'll progress in understanding, and they'll be a greater prophet than you standing on the corners one day. That's the goal. That's why I said, uh, verse 6, it said, Generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare it to their children. So the understanding keeps on growing and growing and growing and growing. Read on, verse 7. Sarah, I mean, Psalm chapter 78, verse 7. That they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. Uh -huh. it, might, it might not be as their fathers a stubborn and rebellious generation. Start teaching these kids these commandments, first off, because they owe it to you for even giving them the, the understanding of God or who they are. But it's so that they might not be stubborn and rebellious. They won't go through the same things you went through. A lot of times it'd be, it'd be like, um, you just like your daddy. You just like your mama. It's because your mama and your daddy raised you the same way that they was. So you tend to repeat the cycle. So now you're instilling something new in them, and now they won't grow up stubborn and rebellious like you was. Read on. It might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart aright, and whose spirit was not steadfast with God. We ain't got time to keep on resetting. We ain't got time to keep on resetting. Okay, this generation's good. We lost this generation. Now we got to, now, oh, this generation's good. Dang, we lost two generations. We ain't got time for that. We building a nation. Every generation from this point on of us understanding got to keep getting better and better and better. And to the point where, and, and if the Lord don't come back in this generation, well, we second, third generation down the line of being in this truth, we got, 
We don't gathered ourselves together truly. We don't truly separated from the nations where we ain't got to depend on nobody else for nothing. But it's going to take our fathers to teach them the laws of God from the infancy. Go to uh, Ecclesiastes 11 and 9. You got something? Yeah, let me. Go let's ahead. go back real quick. Uh, Ephesians chapter 6 again. Yeah, because I think there's some more on that. Yeah. It is. I, I ain't got to. No, no, I wasn't. I went everywhere else. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, Ephesians chapter 6, read verse 1 again. Oh, yeah. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. Children. Obey your parents in the Lord, uh -huh. for this is right. Read on. Honor thy father and mother, uh -huh. which is the first commandment with promise. This is the first commandment from the Lord, I meaning this commandment comes from the Lord. Read that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest and and thou mayest live long on the earth. Now let's deal with that part. That thou mayest live long on the earth. Uh, let's use Chicago for instance. There you go. Uh, young. So-called black men are dying in Chicago. Hispanic man too. What's the yeah right right Hispanics, so-called Hispanics, Native Americans. We down all over the country, right? Uh, in Chicago, what's the number one uh, source of of death in Chicago? Gangs. Y'all don't know? Gangs, right? They're killing each other. Every child that dies, what does their mother say? Mm. Stand up, stand up, stand up. Oh, he was such a good child. Uh, yeah, yeah, they say that too. But what? But what do they say also? FDL. They need to stop the violence. Stop like the violence. Crime. Stop the violence. I told him to stop. Stop running with that gang. Right. Stop. Sh leave them guns alone. Leave it alone. Every single parent in Chicago is telling their kids what? What are they telling their kids? Stop the violence. Stop being in the games. Leave the guns alone. Leave the violence alone. And when they're not listening to their mother, their father, telling them that, what happens to them? They end up dead. Right. It's no coincidence. They end up dead because the Lord is saying the same thing. Even though the mother and the father may not know the truth, may not know the Israelites, they're still teaching their kids to, you know, love your brother. Right, right. And that's funny you say that. When Levi, when Levi, our mothers do that, and they'll be like, your mother said to stay home, bro. Stay home, bro. We don't, we don't want no trouble tonight. Right. When the mothers <laughs> told us to stay home, something bad always happened when we went out. So we'd be like, oh, bro, just stay home, bro. You're going to cause trouble with me, bro. Ain't no coincidence. Man. Read that again. Read verse, Ephesians uh, chapter 6 and verse 3. Right. That it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. How do we live long on the earth? Can somebody give me a scripture? Right. <laughs> we just read it. Uh, you sure? Proverbs 7 and 2. Okay, let's read it. Let's read it. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Proverbs chapter 7 and verse 2. Keep my commandments and live. So let's go back. Go back, all right? Verse 3 again. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 3. That it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. So God says, listening to your mother and the father in the Lord makes you live longer. Why? Look at it. Why? We just read it. Just connect the dots. Why? Why would you live longer by listening to your mother and your father in the Lord? Why would you live longer by listening to your mother and father in the Lord? Ira. Mike. Because if you keep the laws, so you speak up, speak up. Because if you keep the laws, you won't get put to death. Right, right. That, yeah, that, you're right. You're right. So why though? Why? How? Why listen to your mother and father? Uh, give you the chance to live longer. Why is that? Young man in the bike. Yep. Microphone. Because they know better. Right. That's good. That they know better. Because the commandment is coming from the Lord. When your mother and your father say, hey, son, keep the Sabbath day. That commandment ain't coming from them. That's coming from God. Your mother and father say, hey, stop rolling around with them, uh, with them game bangers, with them troublemakers. That ain't coming from them. That's coming from the Lord. And the Lord said, if you don't keep that, that commandment, you're going to be put to death. 
Judgment comes. Boom. So that's why. For all you little kids out here that like to lie to their pants and, and sneak around. I'm going to point over here too. Young women like to sneak around and, and do all types of mischievous things. You better believe the most high eyes is on you. Hey, officer. The most high eyes. Hold, hold on. One, one second. The most high eyes on you. And if your mother and father is in here teaching you God's commandments and you disobeying, you better believe judgment is coming. You better believe judgment is coming. Exactly right. Here we go. Hold on. Let's prove it. Ecclesiastes 11 and 9. You threw me the loop. I'm going to catch it and dunk it. <laughs> Ecclesiastes 11 and 9. Let's see. Does it's God care about you? Because I said earlier, he'll care how old you are. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 and verse 9. Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth. You young, your parents is taking care of you, roof over your head. They feeding you. Enjoy your childhood. God says that. You're supposed to do that. Enjoy it. Read on. And let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth. Mm -hmm. And walk in the ways of thine heart. Mm -hmm. And in the sight of thine eyes. But no doubt. Well, you can do what you want to. But you better know this. Read on. That for all these things, God will bring thee into judgment. God don't care how old you are. If you want to walk outside of the commandments that your parents done taught you, oh, go ahead and live it up. But know thou, I'm going to bring everything into judgment. Hey, and as parents, we should be t teaching our kids that judgment will come. It's going to come. I had to tell Anaya. She was lying. I looked at the screen and said, you know, the most I will kill you. I don't care how old you is. Yeah. The most I will put you to death right now for lying to me. Sure will. She started crying. That's I the truth. Phrases. That's the reality of it. The most I will put you to death. Scripture saying in, in Revelation, liars shall not enter in. Read it again. Verse 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 and verse 9. Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth. And let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth. And walk in the ways of thine heart and in the sight of thine eyes. But know thou. But know this. That for all these things, God will bring thee into judgment. You won't disrespect and disobey your parents. God will bring that thing into judgment. He going to bring it into judgment. And, and, and this is how the most high do it. Oh, oh, you won't be rebellious all the time. You up under your parents' roof and they doing good to you, taking care of you. Trying to teach you the laws of your God? I'm going to let you have kids. And I'm going to make them a terror to your ass. Because you didn't obey your parents. Your kids going to be terrible. I'm going to bring it into judgment. I might not kill you. I ain't kidding. I'm going to kill you. Because you, you, you might repent later on. But the kids you have, I'm going to make them terrors to you. Because you did your parents the same way. That's my judgment for you. Bam. Verse 10. Verse 10. Therefore, remove sorrow from thine heart. If you can't do what you want to. You better remove that from your mind. It's, it's all for your benefit at the end of the day. Read on. And put away evil from thy flesh. Uh -huh. For childhood and youth are vanity. You ain't got time to sow your royal oats, you young man. <laughs> you, you young ladies over here, you ain't got time to find Mr. Right. God said you better remove that, that evil from your flesh. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> remove that evil from your flesh because your age and your youth is vanity to God. Don't mean nothing to him. Hey, 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 we <laughs> laugh, but the seriousness of this thing. Y'all going to understand. We going to die. Who going to be left back when, the, when we all die? When the mother and father die, who going to be left here? Our kids, are they going to be doing the laws of God like we did? Or are they going to revert back to drug mm -hmm. dealing, game banging, and we continue to go around this damn mountain for the next 400 years? Because ain't no time on when Christ coming back. A lot of people get it twisted. Ain't no time on when Christ coming back. We can't say, oh, well, this is the last generation. Nah, we don't, we don't know. know. We don't know. We don't know. So it take everybody to be in order from the top to the bottom. Exactly right. Go to uh, Colossians 3 and 20. We're almost done with the fifth commandment. <laughs> Children of the deep basics. Go into it. Uh, Colossians 3 and 20. 
Colossians chapter 3 and verse 20. Children, obey your parents What in all things. Go ahead. For this is well pleasing unto the Lord. Hold on, read it again. Children, obey your parents in all things. For this is well pleasing unto the Lord. So you young kids, like I say, you might be middle school, high school, college, still living at home. Your parents is in here in this truth. If you want to please the most high, one way of doing it is obeying your parents in the Lord. Don't give them all that pushback and that attitude when they are keeping the commandments and trying to keep you uh, and keep you keeping the commandments. So you can end up living a long life. It's for your benefit. And, you know, we be kids. We don't, you know. I was young. I was young once. <laughs> I was young. And I couldn't think, no, I never thought I'd be in my 30s. I didn't even, I didn't even know that age existed. You know, my parents is old and all that type of stuff. I'm like, I wasn't even thinking that far ahead. I thought I was going to be in my 20s forever. Until... Until 29 hit. <laughs> 29 hit. I was like, damn. I'm going to end up dying one day. I'm getting old. Midlife crisis. I had a midlife crisis. Yeah, midlife, <laughs> midlife crisis. <laughs> We're all going to do that. But to please the Lord, if I would have knew this, I would have did. I would have treated my parents a little bit better because I would have knew, for this is pleasing unto the Lord. I had a mind for God. I was searching for him. Obviously, that's how I ended up in here. But I didn't know one way to please the Lord was to obey my parents. I just obeyed them on the earthly level. So I don't, I'll, I obeyed them on the earthly level so I don't get a whooping, so I'm going to do what they say. That was it. But I was still doing all kind of evil stuff that I knew I shouldn't have been doing behind their backs. I wasn't pleasing the Lord in that. And a, and a, a lot of times as kids... And young women, young teenage women, young teenage kids, young boys, young girls, we got that mindset as a kid, like, man, my mama don't understand me. My 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 daddy don't understand me. Yeah. Why can't why can't I go to the club? Mm -hmm. Why why why, why can't why I go, can to, I go uh, to the movies? Right. With why? my friends. I'm just going to the movies. I ain't doing nothing bad. Not understanding that we all was that age before. Yeah. Right. We all was in that mindset before. Right. We know what happens at the movies. Right. Me we up. know what happens. That's why the most I say, just shut up and fall in line. If you a child, hold on. I'm going to get one more screen. Hold on, hold on. Let me find that. Get that in Ciroc, man. Watch this. Get that in Ciroc. Uh, hold on. Uh, 29 and verse 23. Ciroc, chapter 29 and verse 23. Be it little or much, hold thee content that thou hear not the reproach of thy house. Read on. For it is a miserable life to go from house to house. For where thou art a stranger, thou darest not open thy mouth. That's going into, that ain't your house. Mm -hmm. That ain't your house. Close your mouth. <laughs> Keep the order. If your mother say, no, you're not going out. It should be, yes, mom. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yes, father. Mm -hmm. I trust in your... I trust in your decision, Father. I trust in your, your, uh, your decision, Mother. I trust in that. That ain't your house. Read it again. Sirach chapter 29, verse 24. For it is a miserable life to go from house to house. For where thou art a stranger, thou darest not open thy mouth. But most I say, if that ain't your house, close your mouth. And as little kids in this generation, we don't know the, the, the act. The act. Of closing our mouths. We want the last word. We want the last word and everything. The most I say, uh, till you get old and you be able to go out and make your own decisions, close your mouth in your parents' house. Go ahead. You do the same thing when you come into the house of the Lord. He said, keep thy foot and shut your mouth when you come into the house of the Lord. That's for you ones that are older in age. Just be quiet. You come in here. <laughs> Except when I ask you a question. <laughs> Don't your parents tell you that? <laughs> Be quiet. Answer me when I tell you. <laughs> Speak when you're spoken to. Uh, Colossians three twenty one. Colossians chapter three and verse twenty one. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Provoke them not to anger, lest they be discouraged. Go to Second Maccabees seven twenty four. Okay, maybe you single sisters by yourself. 
You got a job just like the man do. Second Maccabees 7, let's read 24. Let's read through it kind of quick. Second Maccabees chapter 7, verse 24. Now Antiochus, thinking himself despised and suspecting it to be a reproachful speech, whilst the youngest was yet alive, did not only exhort him by words, but also assured him with oaths that he would make him both a rich and happy man if he would turn from the laws of his fathers. Turn and from the what? From the laws of his fathers. Mm -hmm. And that also he would take him for his friend and trust him with affairs. But when the young man would in no case hearken unto him, the king called his mother. So he, now he called the mother. He's trying to get him to turn from the laws of God. And he called his mother. Because I know who raised you. Let me call. Let me try to uh, play on your mother's uh, uh, emotions. Because I know you'll listen to her. Read on. And exhorted her. That she would counsel the young man to save his life. And his life's on the line here now. He got to turn away from those laws. I'm telling you right now. He got to do. He got to live like us. Do what we do. His life's on the line. I'm telling you right now. You've seen the other six. You see what's going to happen to him. His life's on the line. Read on. And when he had exhorted her with many words, she promised him that she would counsel her son. But she bound herself towards him, laughing the cruel tyrant to scorn. Spake in her country language on this manner. Oh my look, look how she exhorted her son. Look, look what she says. Oh my son, have pity upon me that bear thee nine months in my womb and gave thee some three years. Now l listen to this. Remember we read earlier in Sirach 27. I mean Sirach 7 27. He said obey your parents. How can you repay them? She's going over what I've done for you your whole life to get you to this point. I buried you nine months. I gave you suck. Read on. For three years, and right? And gave thee suck three years and nourished thee. I fed you. And brought thee up unto this age. Uh-huh. And endured the troubles of education. So even the women have to do what? Read on. Endured the troubles of education. You got to endure the troubles of education. Might be a single mother. No excuse with God. He still is commanding you to teach them, like we read in Josephus, in, in the ways of their forefathers so that they may imitate them. You got a daughter. You got a teacher. You got to go over the history of Susanna with her. And then you got to be living it so they can see the example of how a righteous woman is supposed to look. Right. Um, we go over this. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. I probably I was waiting on a class. I think I got a class brewing in my spirit. I think I'm going to call it, which Proverbs woman are you? Mm. It's coming down the pipeline. But uh, <laughs> a lot of a lot of I you know dealing with sisters, I see a lot of times. I think it is in your mind, y'all afraid to put in the work to be a Proverbs thirty one woman, because when you read it, it seems like it's a lot to do. So you just you just revert to the old woman that you are. Say this is how I was raised, because you don't want to go through the troubles of education with yourself and learn how to be a Proverbs thirty one woman. So you just settle. And, you know, this is how I deal with people. This is me. Mm -mm. Now I got, I got strife between sisters every few months. It baffles me. I think some of y'all lazy. Y'all are afraid to step into that role. But a class is coming for that. But you got to endure the troubles of education, too, with your children. If you might be a single mother here, you got to learn it so you're able to teach them. God forbid that they grow up and go through some of the things that you went through. And a lot of y'all know, y'all was dogged out by men. Mm -hmm. Well, half y'all don't trust them. Right. Hell, y'all don't trust us half the time. Because you, in your mind, you got everybody that done, done you wrong, and you equate them to us. Because the way you was raised. If you don't go through the troubles of education, your, your daughter's going to end up going through the life you did. Your son's going to be out there, might even move to Chicago. Just for that lifestyle. We don't see it. Sisters, you, you got to go through that too. You got to endure the troubles of education. Now, on the flip side, 1 Timothy 5. That's just the, you know, that's the surface of children obey thy father. 1 Timothy chapter 5 and 1. 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 1. What about spiritually? Rebuke not an elder. Do what? 
rebuke not an elder, uh -huh. but entreat him as a father. God tells you to do what to an elder? Rebuke not an elder, uh -huh. but entreat him as a father. It's not to, nobody's above the scriptures. Somebody's wrong. The scriptures have to come forth for correction. That's why it was written. Rebuke not an elder. Going into, be careful how you talk to him. You don't talk to him like no regular man. God dealing with him, obviously, to get him to the point of him being an elder, a deacon, whatever it might be. So he says, rebuke not an elder. Be careful how you talk to him. And also do what? Treat him what? As a father. And treat him as a father. That's why we went through the surface level of how to obey thy father and thy mother. I like, I like you know what I mean. I, we went through that first so you can understand how you're supposed to treat your spiritual father Cap. and treat them as a father. And you know how funny that thing is because my mother and my father, like, say he'll be in the house. He'll tell me to grab the remote. The remote will be right there. Mm -hmm. And it cut right in the same room as him. I don't and we have to treat him as a father. Our fathers give us orders. Same thing goes for the bishops, the captains, the ones, the leadership. And treat them as fathers because they watch over our souls. Okay. So when they give an order, we follow it just like we will follow our father's order. Because in it's the in the Lord. Hebrews 13, 17. Oh, um, go, hold on. Read verse 1 and 2 together, yes, though. Sir. 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 1. Rebuke not an elder. But entreat him as a father, uh -huh. and the younger men as brethren. Younger men as brethren. The elder women as mothers. Those that been in this truth before you, Mama Parya, Mother Shamara, as mothers. On down the line, too. As mothers. Read the on. younger as sisters uh -huh. with all purity. Now listen to this. Not an elder. And treat him as a father. So it's, it's an elder. He's not your biological father. Younger men as brethren, they ain't your biological brothers. The elder women, they're not your biological mothers. The, young, the younger sisters, the younger ones as sisters, they're not your biological sisters. But right there in two verses, God just named a complete family. Spiritually, complete family Treat them the exact same way that if you was an obedient child in the world, you would treat them people. You treat them the same way and esteem them higher. Treat them even better. That's why I'm constantly on you sisters and you brothers. There's no way you should be in here amongst brothers and not know your own brother name. No way you should be in here amongst sisters and not know their names. No way you should be in here and forget your spiritual father's names. You should, no way you should not know all the deacons in New York. Hmm. No way. Unless you ain't applying the fifth commandment. Mm. Church. <laughs> <laughs> not up in here. <laughs> all right. Uh, go to Hebrews 13, 17. This is why you treat your, your elders as fathers. Bishop Nathaniel. Bishop Kenai, the deacons. Hebrews 13, 17. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 17. Uh-huh. Obey them that have the rule over you. Don't, don't uh, biological, natural mothers and fathers, don't they have rule over the children, brothers? Or do your kids run the household? Do, do your biological sons and daughters, do y'all have rule over them, brothers? Hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, no, that's why that, we're going that ain't, Come on, come that's on, why we, No, no, no. That, that response, it tells us a whole lot. Damn. Better get your house in order. Right. Hebrews 13, 17 again. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17. Obey them that have the rule over you. Just like you would your biological parents. Read on. And submit yourselves. Just like Christ submitted himself to Joseph and Mary. Read on. For they watch for your soul. Because your parents do what? Watch for your soul. I see, we tell you all the time. What Bishop, Bishop can I say? I was under Bishop for, for three, four years. And I treated him as a father. Called him so much. So much. Um, you know how he, he would say, this is an unthankworthy job. 
don't you got kids that you do all you can for and then like pfft, they they treat it like it ain't really nothing. You know, how one way you go out, you don't work uh, uh, all week and you do something good for them. You buy them something and then the next day they go out there and get it dirty. Dad, you don't care nothing about them shoes I just brought you. You breaking that toy, you don't even care nothing about it. You be like, God, Lee, this old f unthankful. Ooh, can't wait till you get grown, boy. <laughs> Bishop, you say that all the time. That's an unthankworthy job. Bishop could die. I've seen him go through it. He, he indefinitely is an example of a father to all Israel. He, you call, he picks up. You won't talk, he talks. Right. You got a question? He answered it. You need to be rebuked. He rebuked you. So it says, for they watch for your souls. He does all that because he truly cares about the people of God. So when orders come down from headquarters on down, I'm going to obey them because I am treating the elders as my fathers. I want to know all y'all names because y'all my brothers. I want to know all y'all names because y'all my sisters. I want to know what's going on in your life because maybe I can help you. If I can't, I'll send you off for some severance. <laughs> I'll send you off again. Somebody, but that's what a, a, a parent would do. They're going to they find help somewhere. Help them out. Call them. Who lives up here? Who lives by them? Who can give them a ride? Tell them to get here. We'll get them back home. That's what fathers do. So it, if that's the case, he said, Obey them, for they watch for your soul. They got your best interests at heart. Read on. As they that must give account, that, that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. Just the same way that you want to raise your kids in joy, your spiritual father from Bishop Nathaniel, Bishop Canal on down, they want to do it with joy. They want to do it with joy. They don't want to have to go through counsel every single week with some of you brothers and sisters. When you old enough, you can handle the problem by yourself. Wouldn't you be mad if you come in there, your kid, 13 years old, in his right mind, and he got his shirt on, and he called you from the other room, say, I can't put on my shoe. You look at him like, what the? Boy, if you don't go somewhere and handle that yourself, tie up your shoe, same way with y'all in the body. You got the Bible. You got the same words we got. You can handle problems amongst yourself before they get up up here and then have to even go up even higher to your spiritual fathers and then they giving us orders coming back down that we got to follow because they are fathers got to grow up spiritually use this bible as it is written it'll handle all your problems even teach you how to honor your mother and your father let's go to the sixth one back to exodus 20 and 13 so we done with uh honor thy mother and thy father let's go exodus 20 and verse 13 good Exodus chapter 20 and verse 13. Thou shalt not kill. That's simple. He, he wasn't one, two, three, four. <laughs> four. Four words. Thou shalt not kill. Surface level of it, right? What does that mean? On the surface, on the top. Thou shalt not kill. Somebody give me an example. What does that mean? What does that commandment mean, brother? Uh, let me get a Mosa in the back. What does it mean? I only have four brothers that didn't know that knows what it means not to kill. Y'all brothers is cool. Y'all, boy. Come on, y'all. Participate. It's the only way you're going to learn. Hell, you didn't go to high school and sit there. You might have did. <laughs> you might have did. Well, you passed with C's and D's. Shalom. Yeah, shalom, brother. Uh, do not murder. Do not murder. Okay. Give me an example because we, we can, under the old covenant, we can stone Don't. people. But and this is in Don't Exodus shoot 20. somebody down with a gun. <laughs> Murder. Nah. Nah. Because of some it's because of some judgments that you kill somebody. Yep. So what does that mean? Thou should not kill. Uh Jack Kim. Shalom, everybody. Shalom. I mean, you should not kill or have hatred in your heart, even without a cause, also. Okay, I like that one. I'm talking about right here. He said, Don't kill. Abaddon, front row. Deep basics of the Ten Commandments. Uh, don't sell drugs to your people. Don't sell drugs to your people? Okay. But the literal, thou should not kill. Literal. Cliff. Because we're going literal right now. The literal, what does it mean? Thou should not kill. Uh, don't rape a woman. 
Ah, uh, no. 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 Literal, y'all. Abraham. We're not on the deep of it. We're on the literal, the surface level. You literally kill someone. Yeah. Okay. What does it mean? Uh, you can't take somebody's life without a justified cause. There you go. <laughs> there you go. That's not kill. All praises. Because his law's written where if they break the law, God said do what to him? Kill him. He ain't contradicting himself. It's just, it's a different, it's, it's a statute to it. It's something deeper than what you just read right there. So let's get the, the deeper level of that, right? Uh, 1 John 3.15. Because right, you could have killed somebody by accident. When the, in the law, it talks about the, the axe and it comes off the handle and hits your brother in the head and he dies. You had to flee to the, the city of refuge. But you weren't held guiltless for killing because you didn't do it intentionally. Thou should not kill intentionally. 1 John 3, 15. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 15. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. So that's the deep basic of whoever does what? Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. Is that the end of it? And ye know that no murderer have eternal life abiding in him. Read it again. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And ye know that no murderer have eternal life abiding in him. So if you hate your brother, hatred, bearing grudges, you can call it whatever you want to. You a murderer in the eyes of God. Sirach 28. 28 and 1. Sirach 28 and 1. Sirach chapter 28 and verse 1. He that revengeth shall find, re shall find vengeance. Sorry. Sirach chapter 28 and verse 1. He that revengeth shall find vengeance from the Lord. And he will surely keep his sins in remembrance. Uh -huh. Forgive thy neighbor the hurt that he have done unto thee. Forgive what? Forgive thy neighbor the hurt that he have done unto thee, uh -huh. so shall thy sins also be forgiven when thou prayest. Read on. One man bear of hatred. Hold on. Read that part again. One man bear of hatred. We just read in 1 John 3, 15, he that hateth his brother is a murderer. God says if a man bears hatred, read on, against another, uh -huh. and doth he seek pardon from the Lord. How you seek forgiveness for your sins when you got hatred for a brother here is how you have hatred. Read the next verse. He, he sheweth no mercy to a man. Hold on. You doing what? He showeth no mercy to a man. So if you have no mercy for your brother or your sister, you have what for him? What did it just say? Verse 3. Read that again. One man beareth hatred. You got hatred for your brother or your sister when you can't extend mercy. Those that hate their brother and their sister, God calls them what in 1 John 3, 15? That's the deep basic of it. Thou should not kill. We ain't done with that. <laughs> Read verse 3 again. Sirach chapter 27 and verse 3. One man beareth hatred against another, and doth he seek pardon from the Lord? Mm -hmm. He showeth no mercy to a man which is like himself. He going through the same thing you are. And doth he ask forgiveness of his own sins? How can you go to God when you ain't mended the relationship that you got with somebody else that ain't right? That's what he's saying. How can you come to me? They like you. They down here with you. And you praying to me. You ain't never seen. I'm in the heavens. And you want all this from me. But you bearing hatred to the same people. You ain't got no mercy for them. You just want to be right. And you going to be right. And you ain't going to say nothing to them until they say you right. That's Israel for you. Verse 5. Verse 5, if he that is but flesh nerve, nourish hatred, who will entreat for pardon of his sins? It says nourish hatred. That means, you know that you nourish hatred? That means you hold on to it. You ain't went to your brother or your sister to mend what's broken between y'all. You hold on to it. What does God call that in Leviticus 19, brothers? No. Read the law. What does he call it when you hold on to something in Leviticus 19? Sirach, stand up. Let's see, because you read the law. I got sisters over here shaking their head. They know what it is. You, you hold the grudge. That's what it means. You nourish it. 
It's saying the same thing, just a different way. You just holding on to it. When you ain't made the wrong right, you hold on to hatred. No mercy. You a murderer. No kingdom of heaven for you. S simple. When you break it down, yet so hard to apply. We own thou should not kill right now, right? Right. right. Yeah, I didn't even know if it's like, damn, who didn't do that? Mercy? Killing them? Yeah, do. Go ahead, officer. Right. And even when it go when you go deeper into nourishing it, you feeding it. Yeah. You're feeding that hatred. Meaning now, if you have a a a, a odd, you odds you at odds with your brother, now you nitpicking little things. Ooh. Look at look at the way they just said shalom. Mm. Look at this. <laughs> they walk past me. They ain't say nothing. Mm. All right. You nitpicking, and now you feeding that hatred every Sabbath, every uh, uh, high holy day, every day, every day. Even the telegram message. Look at that. Mm. They didn't mean that. Most high in Christ. Look how they said look that. Look at it. They, they don't spell it like that. <laughs> yeah. You f nurturing that hatred. Why she had to say shalom in all caps with an Come exclamation on. point. You nourish she yelling? hatred. She yelling. Oh, he yelling. He yelling? Come on. You nourish Dang, he didn't. That's look right. at that. It took him 45 minutes to respond to my message when I seen him online right there. There you go. There you go. There you go. It took him two hours. Took him two hours two to hours. respond back? You didn't see the message? I had seen on Telegram with the two checks popped up, so I know you looked at it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you nourishing that hatred, nitpicking, finding anything to feed it. Yeah, Brother Judah, microphone. Um, would Matthews 5 and 22 go with that? Uh, let's go to it. Let's see. I don't have that down, but let's see. Read it when you get it. Matthews chapter 5, verse 22. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. Mm -hmm. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, thou fool, shall be in danger oh, of I the council. Oh, I ain't trying to hear that. But whosoever shall say, thy fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar and the remembrance that thou that thy brother have ought against thee, Leave there thy gift. Le leave your prayer right in your mouth. <laughs> Read on. Before the altar and go the way. First be reconciled to thy brother and then come and offer thy gift. Don't nourish that hatred. Don't cause. Okay, in your mind. No, I don't. I ain't got no problem with them. It's a grudge. It is what it is. That grudge is hatred. No mercy. And. And Good. deep down, that makes you a liar. Mm -hmm. It shows that you really don't love God. Okay. Can I get 1 John chapter 4 and verse 20? Yeah, bring it up. 1 John chapter 4 and verse 20. Because that, because you hating your brother, you bearing grudges against your sister. I'll deep down it. inside, that shows you really do not love God. You killing. You're a murderer. Right. 1 John chapter 4 verse 20. If a man say, I love God, uh -huh. and hateth his brother. And murders his brother. This, this is what you're actually doing spiritually. Mm -hmm. You're murdering your brother. Little by little. Read. He is a liar. You are a liar. Do, is any liar going to enter into the kingdom of heaven? So you're not going to get the kingdom. Read on. For he that loveth not his brother uh -huh. whom he hath seen. You, you, you have your brother, you have your sister every day who you can. Hey, you know what? Let me. You know, come to a side, Matthew 18, you just to gain your brother back. That's what Matthew 18 was created for. Yeah. To gain your brother back, not, not to, to rebuke him. Yeah, to tear him We down. only use it to rebuke. <laughs> right. You're supposed to gain them back when you do that. To make amends what right. went wrong. Right. Not to, I'm going to rebuke you and tell you this is how I feel. Right. You go your way, I go my way. We just ain't going to vibe together no more. Nah. That's that old man, worldly woman in right. you. <laughs> right, for real. You're supposed to gain them back. Y'all supposed to, it supposed to have felt as nothing happened. Read on. <laughs> That's how it's supposed to be. Right. Oh, uh, okay. I'm reading. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mad. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, uh -huh. how can he love God whom he hath not seen? Remember, we're the type of people that honor with our lips. Oh, God, I'll do this for you. If you was here, I'd have done I that. love God. Right. If, 
if uh if I if I was Peter, I would have fought in the garden to make sure you would have never got crucified. We'll say all these bold swell up words. Oh, I God. love the truth. Right. But when it comes to your brothers and sisters in the truth, you won't even apply the commandments with them. Oof. You'll take it to the grave. Oof. Hey, hey, Cap, that was heavy what you just said. I love the truth. I'll never leave. Mm. I'm gonna tell you, we've been we've been in the truth for a little Cap, we've been what, six years? Five years, man, oh, man, severe has been what four years now, three years. I'm gonna tell you, every new person says the same thing. I never leave. I never leave the truth. I love everybody. Y'all my brothers and sisters. I'm home now. But soon as something come up, soon as the offense come, like Christ say, they gotta come. Now nah, I can't be there. I hate it there. I don't wanna make men's with my see that in my sister. That's just somebody I sit next to. Can we read the scripture? Can we we read scripture? it earlier. <laughs> the hey. elders as fathers. The hey, elder women over. as mothers. The jump younger over. as sisters. Right. Jump over to uh, chapter 5. Did y'all read that? Chapter no. 5? Oh, no, no, no. Chapter 5 and verse 2. First John, chapter 5 and verse 2. By this we know that we love the children of God. By this we know that we love everybody in here. The children of God are who, brothers? The Israelites, this is how you know if you truly love your people. Mm. Read. When we love God. Read. When we love God Come on. and keep his commandments. So if you ain't keeping God's commandments, you don't love the person you're sitting next to. No. Nope. That, and that <laughs> even goes into when something is wrong with us, mm -hmm. I don't let it fester for weeks and months. Mm. Because I love you because I love God, so I'm apply the commandments that he's given us. Right, right. Because I don't want to hate you because if I hate you, that means I'm a murderer. Right, right. And, and no murderer is going to enter to the kingdom. We try to mask our hatred with smiles. Mm. We try to mask our hatred with shalom. We try to mask our hatred with, you want some 11 bread? <laughs> we try to mask our hatred with... Dang, that head right look good on you, girl. We try to mask our hatred. Read that again. Let's read that again, brother. First John chapter 5 and verse 2. Come on. By this, we know that we love the children of God. There's only one way to find out if we really love the people in here. When, we, when we love God and keep his commandments. That's it. That's the only way. And if you're not loving your people, what are you doing? You're hating what is what? It's murdering. If you ain't loving your people, you're killing your people. Mm. Uh, go back to Sirach 28 and let's read verse 5 on down again. Sirach chapter 28 and verse 5. If he that is but flesh nourish hatred, who will entreat for pardon of his sins? Who is supposed to? Who is supposed to go to God on behalf of us for the sins that we commit, brothers? God just asked you, who gonna do it then if you got hatred between your brothers and sisters? He ain't doing it. The wages of sin are what, brothers? You can die at any moment. And God got all the justification for it because you ain't showed no mercy and you bearing hatred, grudges amongst brothers and sisters, and you ain't mean, mended it and made it right. You don't love God. He can kill you anyway because you don't love him because he gave you the commandment. Read on. Remember thy end and let enmity cease. Hatred. Remember corruption and death. Man, our life is too short. It's too short. We ain't living as long as, as Adam. <laughs> we ain't living as long as Abraham no more. What's that saying that, you ha that, that, that we have? Uh, the one place that I should have peace is where, brothers? Oh, y'all don't know. Damn. All right. Huh? Where's the one place you should have peace? Where's a married brother at? Raise your hand. Mary, brother, do you want to come home from work and have a wife that's bickering? No. So the one place you should have peace is in your home. Ain't this the house of the Lord? But you don't want peace here. Hmm. Everywhere else but the house of the Lord, mm. hold on, which hold on. is I, greater I than ask. your own house. I got to ask a question. I got to ask a question. When Cap said the house, what is the house, brothers? Huh? No, nah, it ain't too deep. What is it? Is it this building? What is it? It's the people. There you so go. when he say the house, he's talking about amongst each other. Yep. 
when we dwell in together in unity. That's the house that we should have, he said. Not the building. Mm -hmm. Don't think that don't think you're gonna come in this building and say, Man, this is this is the most house temple right here. Because we might be gone. Right. <laughs> Soon. Right, we out of here. <laughs> hey, and this side note, church is so this is the house of God. Two weeks ago it was a strip club. Now, <laughs> 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 now, nah, 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 when they did, they, they painted it, put Jesus Christ Church of God on the front. Now it's holy. First 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 Jesus Christ Church of God yeah. on the front, now it's holy. Nah, nah. <laughs> side though, side though. <laughs> so it says corruption and death, because we, our life is short. We should at least have peace amongst each other and abide in the commandments. Read on. Remember the commandments and bear no malice what, to the hold, What's another word for malice, brothers? Hatred towards who? To thy neighbor. Because if you hate your neighbor, you're really doing what to him? You're killing him. Read on. Remember the covenant of the highest. That we all going to die one day. And wink at ignorance. They made, they, okay, they offended me. They didn't do it right. <laughs> it rubbed me the wrong way, but I'm going to get over this. And I'm going to go to them, and we're going to make this thing right. Because life is too short. Hell, everybody else in the world is against us. At least we should be on each other's side right. against everybody right. else in the world. Right. All right, so let's go to what else is killing Deuteronomy. 22. Deuteronomy chapter 22. Let's start at verse 25. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 25. But if a man find a betrothed, a betrothed, a betrothed damsel, betrothed. betrothed damsel in the field, and the man force her and lie with her. Did the man only that lay with her shall die? What does it mean to force somebody, uh, force a woman to lie with you? Uh, let's see. Hosea, stand up. He up front. What does it mean you force somebody? Rape. You raping them, especially a woman. It says you forced her to lie with you. Then the man only that lay with her shall die. Read on. But unto the damsel thou shalt do nothing. There is in the damsel no sin worthy of death. Because she didn't agree for that. She didn't want that to happen. Read on. For as when a man riseth against his neighbor and slave him, even so is this matter. So God sees rape in the same breath as what, brothers? Murder. So, you know, a lot of people say, you know, you ask the question, where is rape in the Ten Commandments? Thou shalt not kill. Right. That's where it's at. Read it again. Verse 26. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 26. But unto the damsel thou shalt do nothing. There is in the damsel no sin worthy of death. For as when a man riseth against his neighbor and slave him, even so is this matter. So God sees rape as the same as murder. Can I bring thou up? shall not kill. Can yeah. I bring up? Um, Go ahead. When, when, because it says, as even so is this matter, when a neighbor rise up against his neighbor and slave him, right? So, say before guns and all that, you'll get in a fist fight, stab him, kill him, right? So, when it came to rape, you'll think, oh, all he did was just force her. No. When it comes to rape, these brothers will beat the woman to submission. Mm -hmm. So, it's the same way. As, her, as him taking her Virginia away from her, it's the same exact way. He has to beat and submit her. To make to to actually for her to give it up like that, because she's gonna be fighting the whole time. You read the same story when with the son of David when he right. raped his sister. Same thing. It's just as murder, just the same way. Exactly right. So hatred, rape, those are things seen as killing. Same breath, right? So go we, to real quick, go ahead. sir. Even the punishment. What was the punishment if? Uh, you committed murder. You murdered your brother. What was the punishment cast on you? You, you forfeit your life. Likewise, when you uh, was raped, when you raped someone, you also forfeit your life as well. That yep. means you were put to death. That brother who did that act, he was put to death as well. Right. So rape is murder. No, you don't force. The, the scripture says, in Exodus 20, says, is thou entice a maid? It means you don't went through the painstaking of doing whatever. And you don't jump the gun. God says to make that right, got to sign papers. It's enticed. That's very different than forced her. Now we got to get papers. No, you, you crazy. Call the police on you. 
Exodus 20 and 14. Let's go back to that. We on the Exodus 20 and 14 now. Yep, let's go to it. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 14. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Go ahead. Read it again. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 14. Thou shalt not commit adultery. All right. Now, thou shalt not commit adultery. Let's go to Deuteronomy 22 again. Deuteronomy 22, 22. Let's see what it means to commit adultery. Surface level. There, right? Go ahead. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 22. If a man be found lying with a woman married to an husband, then they, then they shall both of them die. Both the man that lay with the woman and the woman, so shalt thou put away evil from Israel. So to commit adultery is to lay with another man or lay with another woman that is married. Read on. Verse 23. Three. If a damsel that is a virgin be betrothed. Betrothed would be, what's another word for betrothed, brothers? Does a brother know? What is another word for betrothed? Amaziah, hit his hand up. Engaged. Engaged, right? If a damsel that now in the word in the world, when somebody says I'm engaged, in your first thought, your man, do you consider them technically married already? No, you don't, right? Okay, let's read verse twenty three. Deuteronomy chapter twenty two and verse twenty three. If a damsel that is a virgin be betrothed unto an husband, and a man find her in the city and lie with her. Then ye shall bring them both out unto the gate of that city, and ye shall stone them with stones that they die. For what reason? The damsel, because she cried not, being in the city, and the man, because he have humbled his neighbor's wife. He did what? Humbled his neighbor's wife. In the eyes of God, ain't no engagement. You married. Because, you know, some, when it was in the world, some brothers might be trying to get in right before they get married. Bachelorette parties, bachelor parties. That's what they do. And then they do whatever they going to do before they truly right. get married. Listen, don't tell night nobody. Of last, last night, night of fun. fun. Don't tell. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. So that moment that you said you was going to marry them, you was already husband and wife in the eyes of God. You just didn't f uh, finish the process of getting the papers, consummating the marriage. You was already married when you said, that's going to be my wife to be right there. That's adultery. Uh, now go to Jeremiah 3.14. Laying down with another man, another woman, right? Whether you're proven, you put it in this case, proven or betrothed. Jeremiah 3.14. Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 14. Turn. O backsliding children, save the Lord, uh -huh. for I am married unto you. God is what? I am married unto you. As a nation, God is married unto us. Read on. And I will take you one of a city and two of a family. Uh -huh. And I will bring you to Zion. And I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. We're getting knowledge and understanding of the deep basics of Ten Commandments. We're on committing adultery right now. Jump back up to verse 1. Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 1. So he's married to us. So let's see. Read verse 1. They say if a man put away his wife and she go from him and become another man's, she, she, shall he, another man, shall he return unto her again? Shall not the land be greatly polluted? But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers. Yet return again to me, saith the Lord. Read on. Lift up thine eyes unto the high places, and see where thou hast not been lying with. And the ways hast thou set for them as the Arabian in the wilderness. Sitting for, and for somebody is you learning when you're sitting down. Like, y'all know. Y'all sitting down. Y'all learning. At this time, we were sitting down for the Arabians like in the wilderness. Learning their ways. And let's see what God says about that. Read and on. thou hast polluted the land. With thy whoredoms uh -huh. and with thy wickedness. Therefore the showers have been withholding, and there have been no latter rain. Mm -hmm. And thou hadest a whore's forehead. We had a what? A whore's forehead. Thou refusest to be ashamed. God said we were some whores the way we went after other people's ways and, and religions. The way we went after Christianity. God said we got a whore's mind. Jump up to six. Jump down to six. Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 6. No, no, yeah, yeah, go ahead. 
the Lord quick. said unto me in the days of Josiah the king, Has thou seen that which backsliding Israel have done? She is gone up upon every mountain, up upon every high mountain, and under every green tree, and they have and there have played the harlot. Mm -hmm. And I said, After she had done all these things, turn thou unto me. But she returned not, and her treacherous sister Judah saw it. And I saw when for all that for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery. We did what? Committed adultery. Uh -huh. I had put her away and given her a bill of the voice. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot also. Read on. And it came to pass through the likeness of her whoredom that she defiled the land and committed adultery. We did what? Committed adultery. With what? With stones and with stocks. So God is telling us right now, Islam, if we into that, we committing what with him? Adultery. Islam's adultery. Go to um, Ezekiel chapter 16. We almost done here. Ezekiel 16. It's for our brothers that are lost in that. They committing adultery with the Most High. Ezekiel 16, 26. Ezekiel chapter 16 and verse 26. Thou hast also committed fornication with the Egyptians, thy neighbors, great of flesh, and has increased thy whoredoms to provoke me to anger. Read on. Behold, therefore I have stretched out my hand over thee, and I have diminished thine ordinary food, and delivered thee unto the will of them that hate thee. The daughters of the Philistines, which are ashamed of thy lewd way. The Philistines, we was doing so bad that the Philistines who worshipped everything, sleeping with everybody, like we read in Leviticus 18, they was ashamed of us. They was like, damn. We wouldn't even thought to do that. Dang, we was some... <laughs> said we was whores. Had a whore's mind. Read on. Thou hast played the whore also with the Assyrians, because thou... Because thou was unsatiable, yea, thou hast played the harlot with them, and yet could it not, and could it not be satisfied. Mm -hmm. Thou hast moreover multiplied thy fornication in the land of Canaan unto the Chaldean, and yet thou was not satisfied herewith. How weak is thine heart, saith the Lord God, seeing thou doest all these things, the work of an imperious, whorish woman. God don't play about worshiping other gods. Is it because he don't call us whores? Because he's married to us. We cheating on him. Read on. And that thou buildest thine imminent place in the head of every way, and makest thine high place in every street, and has not been as an harlot, if in that thou scornest higher. Well, that means you don't set up churches on every corner. That's what it says when it says, thou buildest thine imminent place in the head of every way. Every street corner, you see a church, black people, Hispanic people in it. And it's up and down the street, all of them different religions. Different denominations of one religion. He, said, he says, uh, every street has been as an harlot in that thou scornest higher. You don't, even no, you don't want nothing in return for what you're doing. You don't want nothing in return. All you want to do is be accepted. You don't want no money. You don't want nothing. Just accept me into white man's religion. Man, it, yeah. <laughs> that's heavy. They, it, it's like it's like you paying to be lied to. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. Man. Paying to be whored out. Right. 30, 32. But as a wife that committeth adultery, which taketh strangers instead of her husband, mm. they give gifts to all whores. But thou givest thy gifts to all thy lovers. He said, you, you, <laughs> you the whore, but you giving them all the money. They supposed to be giving you money for playing it. Right. You got it all backwards. Right. You don't even want nothing in return. Every time they shoot you down, you automatically forgive them. Right. Mm. You don't want nothing in return. Right. Damn, boy, that is, we the Israelites. Right. <laughs> That's talking about us right there. <laughs> Read on. But thou givest thy gifts to all thy lovers, and hirest them, that they may come unto thee on every side for thy whoredom. Read on. And the contrary is in thee from other women in thy whoredoms, whereas none followeth thee to commit whoredoms. And in that thou givest a reward, and no reward is given unto thee. Therefore thou art contrary, and, where, 
Wherefore, O harlot, hear the word of the Lord. <laughs> you harlot, hear the word of the Lord. Go back up to verse 26. Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 26. Thou hast also committed fornication with the Egyptians. God is telling you, if you're in the midst of e Egyptology, you're in the midst of what? Adultery. Thou should not commit adultery. This is the, the basics of it. Find yourself in Egyptology, you're in the midst of adultery with God. Find yourself in Islam, you're in the midst of adultery with God. Go to Psalms 119 and 9. So let's see. What did, what did he say about these commandments? Psalms 119 and 9. Let's read that. Psalms chapter 119 and verse 9. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? No, 119, 109. Songs 119, verse 109. Mm -hmm. My soul is continually in my hand, yet do I not forget thy law. He said, I don't, I don't do what? Yet do I not forget thy law. Uh-huh. The wicked have laid a snare for me. Yet I erred not from thy precepts. So no matter what we're going through, we cannot forget the laws of God, nor err from, our, from the precepts of God, no matter what the wicked does to us. When, they, when, when the, the burdens of the world get to pouring more and more on your back, that's when you should start drawing more and more closer to the laws of God. We tend to do the opposite where the, way the, the troubles of the world get on us, and we close the Bible and try to do it on our own. Until you hit rock bottom and then you want to open it up. You should have did that in the first place. Go to Proverbs chapter 28 verse 9. Last scripture here. Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 9. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be an abomination. Even his prayer shall be an abomination. That's how important the laws is when it comes to God. That it can stop you from your prayers being heard. You know, our people, you know, in, in their mind, they, they lie to themselves. But us in here, we can't lie to ourselves. We know the truth. We understand it. No longer can we play with the laws of God and not apply them to our life because they for our benefit. We read earlier, it says, keep my commandments and do what, brothers? Yeah. And live. Now go back to Psalms 119 and 9. Psalms 119 and 9. Psalms chapter 119. In verse 9, mm -hmm. wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Read on. W with my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. David prayed that God didn't let him do what? Wander, wander from thy commandments. Wander from thy commandments. That means close the book. That means don't study throughout the week. That means only hear the word of God through videos and when you come here. He said, don't let me wander because we ain't going over commandments all the time. We go through different things. We teach on different things. But David said, don't let me wander from, my, from your commandments. So it took him to open up the book and start reading. From the beginning, getting the understanding and getting the deep understanding of, it, of the basics. Jump up to verse 21. Because when you wander away, this is what you find yourself in. Songs chapter 119, verse 21. That has rebuked the proud that are cursed. That are what? That are cursed. Uh -huh. Which do err from thy commandments. Who wants, does anybody in here wants to go through and, and relive Deuteronomy 28 for another 400 years? God's giving you the answer then. Read verse 21 again. Thou has rebuked the proud that are cursed. Which do err from thy commandments. That's why it's so important for us to study the deep basics of the commandments. So we can begin to apply. This is what is going to get us back into good graces with the Most High. This is what's going to get us up out of captivity and the curse lift from us. So it's not just a, I know they might, they simple to understand sometimes. But it's not, it's not a light thing when it comes to learning God's laws and applying them. This is your key to getting out of captivity. I'm Elton Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ.
YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.